inspiration to others. My name is Kiki Rogers. I am your gracious hostess and so grateful to be here today. And I am joined with our guest today. Her name is Tina Toro Evans. She is an entrepreneur, a mother, a stepmother, a wife, and a great member of our community here in Tucson and um, has the most beautiful floral arrangements I've ever seen. So thank you for being here, Tina. Thank you so much for having me, Kiki. Well, I was just really glad we got that chance to meet. Of course, like through the networking circles, we were just talking about how much networking or how much interaction we do with others in our community. And it was through those circles that you and I met. Yep, absolutely. So and happy that I met you. And Everything happens, you know, brings us together for certain reasons in life. So I know I was supposed to meet you. I absolutely agree with that. I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, it's so funny how life just kind of plays itself out and how no's turn into other opportunities, you know? Yeah. Well, I had asked you to come on today because you, Tina, have quite an amazing story about perseverance as a mother, as a young mother, and um, one that... Uh, you were in a relationship with the father of your children at the time, and it wasn't the healthiest situation for yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Do you mind sharing more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I found myself after a couple years of being in our marriage that um, I all of a sudden was with an alcoholic before my eyes. Didn't really, you know, understand what was happening up until that point and then all of a sudden it became very clear that wow this this is a real problem mm -hmm. um a real addiction my father had passed from a you know partially from an addiction with along with his illness you know really lost his will to live through that addiction and so then once my eyes were open to what addiction could really do to somebody then i started really being able to see the light that okay my then husband and father of my children was a full-blown addict. And the way that he was treating me was not the way that I would ever have wanted my children to be treated in a relationship, especially looking at my, my beautiful young daughter. I was like, no way. I got to make the decision to go and, you know, make a better life for us. Um, but I knew it would be very difficult, especially being a single mom in Seattle, huge city, um, very expensive to live there. So it was a tough decision, but um, I did end up getting let's, full custody. That's, yes. Let's talk about yeah. that for yeah. a minute. So let's you're talk. in a relationship, you're married, have children. Yep. You realize his drinking. You and you had said something about how um, you had began to see yeah. things differently. Mm -hmm. Was that addiction and that problem always there and you hadn't noticed it or did the problem worsen and it started to get your attention definitely number one and partially number two uh, it was always there but it did start to worsen as well yeah. um and that's and the way that i was being treated in the relationship was significantly worsening and uh, my next question was going to be what were some of those red flags oh, and yeah. Uh, being told that I wouldn't amount to anything. I wasn't good enough. I didn't deserve better. This is as good as it was going to get. Those were a lot of the things that were said to me almost on a daily basis. That's a lot of negativity. A lot of negativity. And it's, you know, it's verbal abuse. There was a lot of words that you would never expect somebody that supposedly loves you to say to you. Um, the narcissism was very intense. Mm -hmm. And I all of a sudden just had my eyes opened. I don't know exactly what that was outside of we were doing marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the, the only thing I can really think to is what really opened my eyes is when I happened to ask her on a one-on-one -on -one session, what are the chances of this relationship working? And she said, honestly, because of him, I would give you guys 2%. That's scary. Two percent chance. It was very scary. It's scary to hear that. So I think that's where the the eye opening really started to happen is because he had quit going to therapy. So that mm -hmm. was also part of it. It was like, oh, and we don't want this to be just bashing no. someone who's not here to Absolutely. defend themselves. That's, and but I'm your experience and your 
yeah. your, how you got through that, though, is yeah. really important to know. So thank yeah. you for sharing. My whole thought is let's bring awareness to for what people to, like, to look out for. Absolutely. You know, so are there any other red flakes then that you had recognized or came to recognize that you wish you saw sooner? Just the, the lack of support, not only the, the talking down, but, you know, I always envisioned myself being in a relationship someday where... Um, I had endless support, somebody that would tell me that they were proud of me, how much they mm-hmm. loved me. And that wasn't there. It wasn't there. And I constantly would think of my kids like, this isn't what a relationship is. This, I need them to see something different, something better, something stronger. And they were probably seeing and hearing. They were little, but yeah, I mean, I just thought to myself, oh, they're, they're seeing the negative things happen you know, from what a little kid could understand. And I could see that they were noticing the the difficulties I was going through. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I was like, if we prolong this relationship, it's just going to get worse for our our kids. And I couldn't allow that to happen. And we hear all the time how abuse usually starts with the mouth. With the mouth. (laughs) I said that wrong, sorry. It starts with the mouth. And then it goes escalates. down and escalates down into the yeah. hands. And I remember, you know, hearing that and I've known other people that it went from being verbal to then physical. Mm-hmm. And that was another reason why I was like, it's time to get out now. Um, I, I didn't want it getting to that level. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew that I deserve, I knew deep down, even with all of the things that were said to me all the time, I knew that I deserved better. I didn't have anyone in my life knowing what was truly happening during that mm-hmm. time because I wasn't talking about it. You're kind of hiding it at that I, Oh, moment. yeah. And yep. it's now, you know, you know about people like throughout your life that are going through that same situation and you're like, oh my gosh, like if you had just told me, but you don't want to talk about it right. when you're in that situation. It's too scary to talk about. And you're like, I don't want any negative attention being brought to my partner. Like, it's like almost a protection thing that we do mm-hmm. because the narcissism is getting to us so much. Did you, I mean, you were using therapy as a tool at that time. Yeah. Um, had you gone into any Al-Anon meetings or were you seeking out any other type of support outside of the marriage? You know, I wasn't. And I think part of it was due to feeling embarrassed about the situation that I felt like I had got myself into, which now I look at it later in life. I'm like, I didn't get myself into this situation. This situation happened. My mind was being turned to, you know, to feel different things and to think things that weren't really how I should be feeling. I'm Not, sure there's a lot of manipulation. So it. much manipulation. It's like, man, you, you don't really recognize what more or what different you could have done until you're out of it. And then once you're out of it, you look back and like, man, I should have gone to some al meetings and you know there's so many other things that could have done differently Mm -hmm. that I didn't do because I just I didn't know to do but you did finally face that embarrassment (laughs) feeling oh yeah Shane turned that embarrassment into courage yeah what was the turning point that created that uh it was actually my mom this was in 2014 she saw that I was upset one day when I was bringing, cause she would watch my kids while I was going to work. And one morning she saw how upset I was with something with, uh, within my relationship. And she said, she's like, you're not happy, are you? It was those words that, and I was looked at her and I was like, no, I'm miserable. I'm so unhappy. And I finally opened up and told somebody, which felt I'm like, ah, it's kind of <laughs> emotional to think about it now. Cause it's like, wow, you, you just need somebody to say something if you like so I guess that's one of my takeaways from that experience is now today if I notice somebody in my life that I love and that I care about not doing okay or not talking about something that seems it's really impacting them Mm -hmm. say something to them ask those those words are you okay like really is everything okay and either they'll open up or they won't yet but the more that we try to be there for the people that we love. And sometimes all it takes is just asking or saying like, you're really not happy, are you? And like immediately from that moment, uh, she was like, all right, let's get you a divorce lawyer. I got your back, let's do this. That's incredible. It was, it was very incredible. I could not have done it without her support. 
there's no way. And um, before we go to the break, yeah. and you did end up losing your mom yeah. not long after that, correct? Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, uh, my mother did pass of her addiction that she formed. I mean, it was kind of there, bits and mm-hmm. pieces throughout her life. It was very hidden from me as a childhood, like in my childhood, um, became a little bit more obvious and clear, uh, but I never in a million years would have thought that that's how I would lose her and losing both of my parents now um, before I even reach 40 years old. uh, It's, it's intense. It's an intense feeling. It's, I will say the number one way that I've been working past that is my own therapy. That's great. Yeah, we could talk definitely more. Absolutely. About that. And we want to encourage anyone out there who is struggling with grief yeah. or depression or, of course, yeah. any domestic abuse to please seek out um, professional help out there. And um, I, we're going to come back after this break, continue to talk with Miss Tina Toro Evans and hear about um, her recent changes in her life over the last year and how she is for now pursuing her passions and her best so we will be back right after this and we are back back to kiki's keys to unlocking your best life stories of people who have been through their worst and now living their best and i am joined today with tina toro evans um, a businesswoman here in tucson pursuing her passion but she's sharing it wasn't an easy road getting there um left an abusive marriage raised two children on her own for six years um, moved, fo- you said you were following a friend from a yes. small town to here, Tucson, right? Yes. And then is that where you met your current husband? Yes. How yes. did you guys meet? Uh, we, <laughs> we met on Tinder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, you know, it's like, I wasn't, I don't think either of us were necessarily looking for anything super serious, but it was during COVID and it was like, gosh, I just want someone to talk to. Right. and hadn't been in a relationship for a little bit. I was very much focused on raising my children. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I started realizing, you know what, I think I'm finally in like a a state of peace where um, I could envision bringing somebody into our lives. But I was very protective also. Like, okay, they got to be pretty, pretty great. (laughs) Absolutely. How long have you been together? Uh, We've been together almost four years now. We met in 2020. He is active duty military. So I am a military spouse. And thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, that is a journey within itself. We could talk about that another day. (laughs) That that is. And we do have quite a few listeners that are um, in the military or military families. And we always are appreciative of that sacrifice. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And that was definitely one challenge in life as well Is he deployed right after we got married uh, uh-huh. last year. And I had all five of our children. I was so just going to say you're a blended family. Blended family. Yep. So now I have five kids and um, they were with us the whole, with me the whole time. Mm-hmm. You know, they go to school here in Tucson. My kids live with us full time. His kids visit with their mom, who is also active Air Force Okay. Um, during school breaks. So, you know, knowing that he was going to be gone for six months and it was going to be just me and them mm-hmm. uh, was a little bit terrifying. And we had only been married a month at that point. So it's like, wait a second, I want my honeymoon stage and <laughs> uh, abruptly had to change that that plan we still haven't taken our honeymoon but we will someday <laughs> you'll, you'll make up for the last oh, time we I'm will. sure <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> so you came to Tucson followed a friend was yes. working a full-time job yep. and about a year ago that job came to an end yeah very so, surprisingly oh yeah I mean there were other people getting laid off mm-hmm. um but that was definitely a I wasn't expecting it we weren't expecting it to hit our department necessarily um so I knew it could happen, but I just was praying it wouldn't. Uh, but at the same time, I am someone that I fully like lean into my faith and believe that there is a reason why everything happens. Um, I was meant to go on to my next chapter of life. And it took me um, probably a good couple of months after getting that news to feel, start to feel better about the future. So I guess that's something I do want to share is like, it's okay to not feel okay after you get some really 
uh, life-changing news. You know, Absolutely. I've been with this company for 18 years and I didn't, I grew up there. That's I started at 19. Entire, like uh, yeah. childhood. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with that mm-hmm. company. Um, went through, you know, the loss of both of my parents with that company, went through my divorce and, you know, raising my children by myself, like up until that point, like I, that's what I had for work. Mm -hmm. And I put my all into that work and it was very, it was tough to stomach. And then my husband was deployed when I got the news. So, so you're all alone with these five children raising them. Yeah. I was like, what is going on here? So There were definitely some very rough uh, days, days where I was like, I just don't even want to face the world. Like I had never really truly felt depression until Mm -hmm. one, losing my mom unexpectedly to her addiction. And then, you know, a year later getting laid off. Uh, Those were the two times in my life where I was like, wow, this is what depression feels like. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to see anybody. And I just remember my kids being like, are you okay? (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to be okay. I just need some time to get to acceptance. That's a big part of grief is Mm -hmm. reaching acceptance. And both of those experiences, it took me some time uh, to get there. You had mentioned earlier the um, getting from that abusive relationship to on your own, you had to come to a point where you had peace in your mind. Yeah. And now you mention acceptance. Yep. And I can see how both peace and acceptance go hand in hand for you. Oh, they do so much. And um, I look at peace as being able to look at the situation and say, this happened and this was terrible. This was really rough. But I am able to move forward and still live an amazing life just with so many new lessons. That's they, incredible. Yeah, they might have been really, really hard lessons to learn. There's a lot that came with all of those losses and all of those challenges where I could have easily just thrown in the towel. Mm-hmm. It, but the number one thing that really kept me going was our children, for one, yeah. and then my husband. He didn't know how to support me, you know, at through those losses as it, he, he did as best as he could. Mm-hmm. We'd never gone through something like this together. Um, so we do uh, monthly marriage counseling still. Before getting married, we were doing couples therapy mm-hmm. with our same therapist. So she's seen us from, you know, my loss with my mom to loss with the job, getting married, uh, him deploying. She's been with us through all of it. And helped us to keep really open communication and really helped him to learn how to support me through these difficult times, but really also helped me to learn how to support myself and to, you know, really encourage myself and to grow and to know that I am, I I have value. I have a lot of value and I have a lot to bring to the, to the table and to life. And just because I'm going through a tough time doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. That's great. So you're accepting the what you don't have control over. Kind yes. of the serenity prayer. You yeah, know, help you're me right. To accept the things <laughs> I cannot change. And that's exactly what it is. I can't change what happened in the past, mm-hmm. but I can choose how I live my life now and yes. going forward. And I'm just I'm so thankful that I have, you know, a husband and a partner now who is like by my side and everything. And more so, you also took on the adventure yeah. of starting your own business at yeah. your layoff. Well, and it's so funny is uh, everyone always says when you're going to be a a, spo- a military spouse at home while your partner's deployed is stay busy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I took that a little too literal and I decided to stay busy with opening a new business and he's the business owner with me. So we work together. Uh, it's, you know, a lot my brainchild and his support. <laughs> and the business is Malamia Ia, right? Malama Ia Floral Design. <laughs> you Malama got your so close. Ia. I was almost there, <laughs> it's a guys. Tough one. <laughs> no, it's like how many times is Kiki going to mispronounce something on air is kind of the side <laughs> game okay. that we play. Um, oh, you're no. so funny. Uh, Malama Ia. Ia Floral Design. Floral Design. You do silk flowers yes. in such a unique and beautiful craft. Thank you. How did you get into that? Oh, man. 
Um, I actually was, I worked in a floral shop in my late teens before joining my first big career. Um, and I just fell in love with working with flowers there, but I, my dad had a 40 plus rose garden and grew all these vegetables while I was growing up and fruits and, uh, tons of other flowers. Like we had the most amazing garden. People would stop by our yard, you know, my whole growing up. And I, I've always had just an intense love for flowers. But one thing I noticed when working in the floral shop is how much flowers get thrown away before they even make it to the mm-hmm. shelf. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are aware of the mass production that comes from, you know, flowers making it to here in the U.S. even. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of importation that's happening. There's a lot of cost behind that. Um, And then for half of the flowers to not even make it to the shelf is significant. And it's it's a terrible thing. Um, So I started realizing back then, like, okay, maybe there's a way to do this with silk flowers. And back, you know, how, almost 20 years ago, the silk flowers were not what they were today. Right. <laughs> but now... These aren't the plastic looking things we find in the Dollar Tree. This, yep. These are higher level. There's silk. much higher quality out yes. there. Yes, absolutely. And um, that's what I always strive to work with. Uh, my favorite compliment is when uh, somebody comes up and sees our flowers at an event or, you know, at a market and they're like, oh, I thought these were real. Mm-hmm. And that's our biggest compliment. And that's what we strive for every single day. And I'm sure you can deliver the silk flowers either for an event like a wedding or or a special holiday or birthday, just like you would deliver fresh flowers to someone, correct? Just like you would do fresh flowers, we do silk flowers and artificial, and we even have hair clips. We have dog collars, cat collars. That's wonderful. Anything you can think of, and we are all about custom requests. And that's... Lama. Oh, I'm saying Here we go. Uh, Malama. M A L A M A space I A. Yes. And Which is Hawaiian. Okay. And uh, it so means? think of to care for, to keep, to protect. That's, oh, that's where wonderful. that came from because it's flowers that will continue to give, you know, the the joy and so think of even for like a home closing, for buying a new house. It's mm-hmm. you know, you get to keep your whoever is receiving it gets to have that memory keep coming back to them because the flowers don't go away. Look them up online, folks. We're running out of time. I am so happy to have you here, Tina. Thank you very much. And to our listeners out there, go be the best that be the best version of you that you can be because nobody else can do it better than you. Have a great weekend.